Hi, this is Karen Burke from Karen Burke Photography and today I wanted to show you how to take a daytime shot and turn it into a nighttime shot. I have a lot of fun doing that and I thought maybe some of you might like to learn how. This is the end product. I took the photo at um, something called Gatsby Days in Warwick, Rhode Island. It's um, it's a Revolutionary War reenactment festival that they have and uh, it's nice. Um, so this is what we're going to end up with and this is straight out of the camera. What I usually do, well because they were using some um, modern day fishing equipment, I first went in and I used the patch tool and made sure it was on content aware and just remove the fishing pole. I'm going to be putting um, a treasure chest there so we really don't have to worry about you know certain things if you're going to be covering them up. But with the patch tool you just take smaller sections and then just slide it over and kind of like to make sure that the the lines in the deck match up. That should work. And it's just it's just a slow process. You slide it over, line things up. There's tons of way to do this. This is just the way I happen to do this. Um, that looks pretty good. I mean you could take your time a lot more uh, over here I ended up taking these boards out and again it's just a matter of matching the lines slide it, line up the the lines and uh, what I, I think I ended up doing over here is copying from this side. What you can do is, um, because if I try to patch here, the angle would be wrong. So what you can do is uh, get rid of the uh, selection. You hit Control D. That'll deselect, and I'll go back with my history and undo that patch. Okay, and I'll hit deselect, and you go up to the lasso tool, and you just select a section of the dock, and you hit Control J. You could hit Refine Edge and feather it. I usually just feather it in a layer, and then you hit Control T, and that will. Uh, you can just drag this over. Uh, put it in, flip it horizontally, line it up, and you've got the rest of your deck. See how there's a little there's edges that don't match in, so you just add a layer mask, grab a brush, on the edges you want the opacity way up because you don't want a line. And I've got it in the selected the black to remove and you just go in and remove the edges. And like I said, this right here is going to be covered with a treasure chest, so you don't need to take all this stuff out. What he needed with a gun, I'll have no clue. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just go into the next photo so we can start converting to um, tonight. So we got the straight out of the camera. Okay, this is the edited version. Open with Photoshop. Okay, we'll make it a little bigger. All right, I put the treasure chest in already. That I got from Deviant Art, and I can um, put the link in the comments um, of the video. But I just dragged it in. 
Put your finger on the shift key when you're resizing so the dimensions stay, um, the proportions stay the way they should. And then you just put it in place. Okay, I'm going to take that out just to show you. Underneath, before you flatten this, you want to be able to um, burn shadows in on the dock. Um, you get your burn tool. and you want to hit probably mid-tones and shadows and a little bit of the highlights. Um, start with the shadows, take it down, and you're just going to go in and where the where you feel, you got to watch where your light's coming from. This one doesn't have a specific direction but you can see where her shadow is so that's where you're going to cast shadows they seem to be going this way so you're going to cast shadows so it doesn't look like it's free floating um, you could cast a shadow a bit over here I'd use a bigger brush and increase just a bit so you can see what the effect it has um, it, Shadows are difficult. You can you can go way overboard with them. So a little bit, just just do it a little bit at a time. So we'll just leave that. I'm going to take those shadows out. History and just take the burn tool. Okay. Now one of my favorite settings is how we're going to start to turn this into a night shot. As you go on your, make sure you're on your layers panel and you could either find it here you're going to do a new adjustment layer or you could find it here layers new adjustment layer and we're going to go to color lookup you click OK and then you're going to have your properties um, tab available to you if it's not you go to windows and you make sure your properties is checked off and um, color lookup has uh, Lots, lots of really neat ways that you can change your picture. Um, I like candlelight cube. Um, I like a lot of times I'll use drop blues because um, when you turn to a night shot, it, it it'll it'll make it very blue. So here we go to night from day cube and see the blue, and it darkens the photo and. Uh, you can go in and you can adjust if you if you want. A lot of times you can even do it twice if you want it really dark. Um, this is okay because it's not super. I don't want it to appear like it's super dark. You can go to your layers and you can adjust the opacity. And then um, what I usually do is I'll go in and put another color lookup and drop the blues so it's not so blue. Um, but I won't do it full force because then it gets really gray, gray looking. So we'll go to the layers and decrease that just a bit. Okay. So we start with daylight, add some darkness, and what you can do is go in and just ever so slightly um, paint out some of the darkness on them if you want, because we're going to add lighting. Not even that much. We're going to have and you could even do this after you add your lighting because then you can see where the light's going to fall. Now when I went to this festival they had they had a lot of uh, really cool things um, and what I do a lot is when I want stock photos for my photo manipulations I go to the museum I take my camera everywhere 
and they had a really cool looking lantern so I took a picture of that and uh, cut it out in Photoshop and um, so we'll put those on the deck and this was a really pretty lantern it does have a ca I never took the candle out because it was just <laughs> too much work um, that's laying here and once you put the light in you're not going to see it so you hit the shift and you resize it try to keep the proportions close to what they would be Oh, right about there and uh, if it's a little crooked you can play with it that looks good and you're gonna want this underneath your color lookups so it's in the dark as well um, we'll, we'll hit uh, I'll hit control J to duplicate it and then control T and we'll put another one right here. If you don't want them to look identical, you can hit Control T and just flip it horizontally. That way they're not carbon copies. Um, then we're going to go in and you can do your, I like to do my dodging and burning and all my highlights later. So I'm just going to add my elements. Um, these are light overlays. Um, I have some Florabella ones. I've made my own. I'll use my own first. Um, this one I had probably done something you're not supposed to do with your camera, but I pointed it towards the sun and took a picture. <laughs> and then uh, darkened around the the, la the light flare to make the overlay. Now this one, these you're going to want on top because you're going to want full color. So once I'm done placing this, you're going to drag it up above everything else because you're going to want the light. You don't want it dimmed at all. Okay, and then we'll pull the Florabella one in. Um, these are huge. Okay, remember to hit the shift key when you're resizing. If you have trouble placing the light when you, these get really small, you can zoom in and uh, so then the box will get bigger and you'll have more room to maneuver your cursor and it'll be easier. Okay, so then we'll move these up, up, and hit screen, screen, and needs a little tweaking. And sometimes what I do is I'll duplicate this, and let's see which one is that one. This one's nice to name your layers once you get a lot of layers. Um, control J and Control T, okay, and you can make that bigger just to cast light, but you're gonna you twist it around so and then just lighten the opacity so it's not it's just extra glow. I'm going to do the same one for this too. Control J, Control T. Make it a little bigger. Check. Decrease. And then um, you could what, make a layer mask down here because the light probably wouldn't be going all the way over the edge. And just what do we have to increase that opacity and just kind of brush this away. You can do the same for Okay, and I'm 
now I'm trying to remember. I think that's all the elements that I used. So then it's just a matter of um, casting the light, um, taking taking some of this light and um, removing it, mo removing the darkness. So we'll go into the uh, color lookup and make the brush a little bigger. Take that down a bit and then just paint in some of the light back in. You can make the brush a little smaller so we're not making the, the water lighted. That probably wouldn't be lit up so much there. Maybe a little bit wrapped around here but not much. Come out this way a bit. some back in. It's a little much. Okay. That's just to give you an idea. Um, then what I like to do is go in and um, use the, the Greater Than Gatsby um, actions. Um, what I do is do some dodging and burning. I mean they've got the shadows here. You want to burn underneath the lanterns on the deck um, so, so they don't look like they're free floating. Doesn't you gotta play with the light, you know, you can make resize it, make it so that uh, it's not too bright, it's casting a glow and uh, that, looks, that looks pretty good just for showing how, how it goes. You can, um, you can even dodge and burn on the lantern if you want. I'm not going to do that now but you could put a little highlight up here. Make sure that you're on the let's see which one that is and uh, make sure you're on that layer and you could um, Dodge, make the, make it a little brighter. It's going to rasterize. Make that a little smaller, and just do the highlights. Okay, so I'm going to flatten this so that I can use my. Um, greater than Gatsby actions and um, I'll use the emotional color base. It'll brighten the center, it'll add a little bit of a vignette and make everything pop. Okay. And if it's too bright, you find it's too bright, you can just uh, delete the opacity. Um, you can go in and she's got quite a shadow on her arm. You can use the, the color correcting and I go too far. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, correct. Selective tone. I like that one. Okay. You select this, the tone you want to use by, um, I use the dropper tool 
and I'm going to use the the skin. It's kind of a gray. Go a little bit back further on her heel. That's probably better. Okay. And then I'll use a smaller brush. some of the edges out. If this was an actual daylight shot, because she would probably have be shadowed, I'm not really worrying about it too much. Um, it could bring up the opacity a bit just to brighten it. And uh, bring that back. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Try another one later. Thank you. Hi. One thing I forgot to do, and I'm hoping this is going to work, is um, I didn't warm it up. Um, you can go in your color lookup again. And properties. and you're going to do crisp warm look. There you go. Now it looks more like the other one. This is only my second tutorial and I'm not there yet. And you can just decrease, increase the opacity. It's just another way to make it pop along with um, everything else. It warms it. It, it. it also creates a vignette and brings brings the light where you want it. And uh, now I'm done. <laughs> Thank you.